so here's one last video. Uh, question number five asks us to look at uh, finding a solution to this system of equations. So if we put it in augmented matrix form, we've got 1, minus 2, 3, 2, 10, 2, minus 4, 8, 6, and 14. I mentioned this in another video. I choose to put the w's as the last column. I don't do alphabetical order. Many books do it that way too, although not all. Okay, so um, we're now going to go ahead and run through the row reduction operation. I want to get a zero in this pivot position, so that gives me just copying the first row. I'm going to multiply the pivot row by negative two and add down. So let's see here, that gives me zero, uh, that gives me zero, that gives me two, uh, that gives me two, negative 20 added, that gives me negative six. So notice, as we've been saying, it's impossible for me to get, if I don't have any more rows. If I did have a row that looked like zero, five, you know, some other terms, I could swap out these two rows to make this a pivot uh, position, but I can't because I'm out of rows below the current pivot row. So instead, uh, this one, so this was our first pivot position here. It already had the pivot one, and this will be our next pivot position. And we can get a one there. We get a one there by dividing that row by two. So we've got one minus two, three, two, ten, zero, zero, one, one, minus three. Now, this is in REF form. We're not in the full reduced row echelon form, REF form, because we haven't gotten a zero above this pivot position here. So we go ahead and multiply the pivot row by negative 3 and add up. So multiplying this pivot row by negative 3 and adding up gives us uh, 0, negative 3 times 1, that would make that negative 1. And that would be a positive 9 added to that is 19. So let's look at what our corresponding equations are. Notice that uh, W is free. So we'll say let W equal S. Uh, the next equation would be z plus w is equal to negative 3, or that z is equal to negative 3 minus w. Uh, so we'd say that z is equal to negative 3 minus s. Okay, that was for that row. Uh, notice that y does not have a pivot column. So we say that y is free. So we could say let's let y equal r. Okay. So then what is x? We would say that x minus 2y uh, minus w is equal to 19, but then that gives us x is equal to 19 plus 2y plus w, and we chose to let y be r and uh, w be s, so we get 19 plus 2r plus s. So we can now represent our solution. First, uh, we'll represent it as a uh, in tuple, so we'd have 19 plus 2r plus s, comma r, uh, comma negative 3 minus s, comma s as our ordered in tuple. If we wanted to put that in vector form, uh, which I recommend practicing, because it's something we're going to do often, we're going to write this as for oops um, x y z w. Uh, we would have the coefficient vectors of 19, 0, negative 3, 0, plus uh, r, and let's see, r, that would be a 2 there for that, and a 1 there for that, 0, 0, and plus our s vector, which would be, that's a 1 for the, y, for the x component, there's a no s component in the r, and there's a minus one component in the uh, z and a one component in the w. So that's how we could represent this as a sum of uh, vectors, including the two free variables. Okay, so um, the remaining questions that you have to work on uh, are to take, so in this case, I've, uh, you know, after you've done the R, you have algorithm a few times, and you get it down, then the question is how do you interpret your solutions? So uh, let's look at this example, and then I'll let you do the rest. 
But notice that we've got, uh, this would correspond to the variable x, y, z. Um, boy, we're out of letters here. I'm going to go ahead and number these as x1. So I'm going to number these as uh, x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. Okay. So notice that we've got a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 variables, but we've only got two pivot columns. Okay. Uh, we've only got the two pivot columns, so we're going to have, if we've got five variables and two of them are pivots, that means we're going to have infinitely many solutions with three arbitrary variables. And by the way, this should be the number two here. So we've got three arbitrary variables. Let's actually talk about writing out the solution. So we see that x5 is free. Why is it free? Because I don't have a pivot uh, position for x5. Likewise, x4 is free because it doesn't have a pivot position. We get that x3 is equal to uh, 0 minus 3x4. That x3 is equal to minus 3x4. Continuing on, we've got that x2. Well, x2 does not have a pivot position, so x2 is free. And finally, we see that x1 is equal to this 3 minus x2 minus 2x4. Okay. So let's see here. Let's go ahead and let x2 equal um, r. Let's let x3 equal s. And let's let x, oops, uh, not x3. Sorry, that wasn't a free variable. Um, so we've got x2 is free, x4 is free. So we could let x4 be s, and then we could let x5, which is also free, be the variable t. And so if we wanted to represent our solution as an ordered uh, quintuplet, we would say, okay, x1 is 3 minus r minus 2s comma uh, r comma negative 3 uh, s comma and uh, s comma and t. So there's our order fifth tuple 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 entries. As a vector we would say that x1, x2, x3, x4, x5 is equal to the coefficient matrix, which is uh, 3, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, plus r, uh, negative 1, uh, excuse me, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, um, Plus, and then for s we'd have negative two in the x in the first coordinate, zero in this coordinate. We've got a minus three in this coordinate and a one in this coordinate and a zero there. And then for the t we'd have notice that none of the other coordinates have a t in them, so they're, all their coordinates are zero and one. So that's how we could represent this solution as a sum of uh, the arbitrary vectors and a constant vector. Okay, folks, I'm going to turn you loose on this. Please let me know what questions you have. I know this was a lot of information presented quickly, so feel free to come by during office hours.